Ruler School is brought to you by Happy Little Hug Factory and these amazing patrons. Extra special thank you to guest lecturer patrons Brody Harris and Lance Albertson. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the video. Hey there everyone, DMO73 here bringing the deck profile for the Seal Auras list that I played earlier this week. Ultimately, this is just a very, very starting place to where to go to Seal. I know that I myself um, wasn't quite sure how to build her. I uh, got some help from Brandon Bremont to kind of create this very starting shell of where to go. I think there is a lot of opportunity for her to be him, her to be improved. Um, but really, this is kind of the core functioning of we're using these auras to kind of keep control of things and make sure we stay safe until we can flip Seal, generate a ton of advantage, stick a Grimia, gain a ton of life, and just kind of beat your opponent over the head that way. Um, so obviously Judgment on the front side is green, Energize is for green. At the end of your turn, you can attach an aura to your hand, or to her. They go in the item zone, so they can't be targeted by anything. On the Phantom Wind side, she's a 10-10, and based on the number of auras, she gets to pick a bunch of effects. Uh, she can produce, uh, put four plus one plus one counters on a resonator you control, uh, generate two four four wind tokens um, that have flying, uh, then you can draw two cards, recover up to three stones, uh, gain a grand of life, or deal 800 damage to target J-Res, and then she has imperishable as long as she has three or more auras attached to her, and then when she's destroyed, you just remove all those auras. So a lot of utility, the main weakness is that she is very vulnerable to Lorite. A single Lorite negates all of her effects, which is a little unfortunate. Going into the stones though for this deck, four Gusting Skies, four Blasting Waves, one Nature's Beauty, and one Summer Spreeze. Ultimately, we're really only playing red for Scarlet's Testament, so if you don't really care about Scarlet's Testament at all, you could easily cut red and go to a completely different color. Uh, I just like the idea of Scarlet's Testament with Advent of Hope Grimia, being able to just kind of play this creature very, very quickly, uh, make it fly, give it the, or make it swift, give it flying drain and barrier and swing it at your opponent's face and do a bunch of damage. Um, but you can definitely take it in a different direction. Going into the deck, we play four Lorite and three Lorite Seven Disciples. Lorite is a great way to be able to protect CL because you can Lorite their Lorite. Uh, and Seven Disciples is just kind of a nice middle ground creature to kind of stick on the board and threaten pressure while you're waiting until CL can flip herself. Second Advent of Hope Grimia is kind of our big boss monster outside of Seal. It's very easy to get a lot of auras in the grave because pretty much the rest of the deck is auras. Uh, and so you can potentially gain a ton of life. I think the most I've gained off of one Grimia hit was 6,000 life um, just off of one swing. Uh, lots of potential uh, there to be able to make a comeback, especially if your, opponent, your life gets low enough. Three Aura of Hope to be able to attach stuff down. Four Whirling Winds, primarily to draw a card um, so that we can kind of cycle the deck, dig through a little bit deeper, get to Lorite, Seven Disciples, and Grimia while also filling those graveyards with um, the Auras. Mother's Love, similarly, primarily used for drawing a card at instant speed, which is really helpful, um, but also uh, can be used to kind of keep ourselves alive by preventing that damage. Can also prevent damage to um, CL, which I think is kind of relevant. Uh, three Resuscitating Wheel to be able to recover and make cutesy plays like you saw before with the Lorite Seven Disciples, having it be like a 9-9 with -nine Flying and Drain, and then you just kind of recover it a couple of times and you gain a ton of life and deal like 27 damage. Um, it's a really nice way to kind of close the games out. Also works really well with Lore, uh, Grimia, like you can swing in the air with Flying and Drain, recover it, banish the Resuscitating Wheel, now it has double instances of Flying and Drain, and so then you just gained 36 life and dealt 24 to your opponent. Um, pretty cute. Four Severing Winds to kind of make sure you win the Cancel Wars. Four Fairer Spells to make sure you win the Cancel Wars to make sure that your CL flip is going to be good. Scarlet's Testament we already talked about. And then Winds of Salvation because it is an aura, but it's also a pseudo-cancel spell. And it can really, really mess up your opponent a lot. Especially against the matchup that I was playing against Gil, where he couldn't really play his 4-drop Gil because I was just going to remove it from the game. But there you have it, guys. That is the list. Huge thanks to Brandon Bremont for kind of helping me with the at least initial core. Um, definitely think there's a lot of interesting things you can do for CL. I don't necessarily think that she's super competitive, but she can be pretty fun. Um, so I think that if you're interested in playing something fun and, and enjoying yourself at Locals, that you should give this deck a try. But other than that, let me know what you guys think in the comment sections down below and kind of which section or which direction you might take CL. And until next time, this is DMO73 signing off.